if you can align yourself with something that you love and you can pick a North Star based on somebody that you've seen do what you want to do and you even understand their story, that's going to help propel you in the right direction. And once you're in the game, you're going to get bounced around. It's like a pinball game. You're going to get bounced around, whatever. Yeah. But the more, the longer you play, the better you get at it. They hate when you elevate. The second of losses, I'm handing them out. Yeah, I had to go delegate. It feel like I'm floating, I'm lost in the moment, I swear I could live. Without further ado, let's bring this amazing guest in properly, okay? So, he is the host of the Rodriguez Project, right? Right? And yes. Double Right. Also, he is the founder and CEO of Mastermind Everything, but Mastermind Media. You know, hey, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for this man having oh, the Mastermind that he that, does. Man. Seriously. Ladies and gentlemen, he's not only an actor, a producer, a director... He's also a, a singer and dancer in his spare times. You know, <laughs> let's welcome the one and only Mark Rodriguez. Oh, thank you, man. No, thank you. Yeah, excited to sit down and uh, and you have a great conversation. We have a lot of really great conversations, but this one's going to be uh, the best one. Yeah, I can feel it. Yes, definitely. So for a lot of people who do not, you know, know originally where you're from, just go ahead and tell us where you're from and your, a little bit of your family background. Sure, sure. Yeah, I think I, I really lucked out with my upbringing. Um, we were just in Detroit this past this past week, and I uh, was sitting down with a friend of mine, and we always talk about how we really lucked out where we were born and who we were surrounded with. Didn't have too much, didn't have too little, so we got to really experience a lot of different things. And uh, so I, I feel really grateful about that. And then my whole childhood was just sports. And um, I learned, I feel like I learned so much from that. School was never really my thing. Um, but <clears throat> when I was in high school, I had to take drama or public speaking. Okay. And I was like, oh, I don't know about public speaking. I heard drama was kind of easier. You could go, you could go there and just chill and uh, sit on the couch and not have to do much. <laughs> But I go into I go into, I go into drama class and I fell in love with it. I started writing s sketches and doing music videos and really fell in love with it. It was it was the first time, other than sports, I was so into something that I could actually like control and like build and create. And I have a really creative uh, family, especially mm -hmm. on my dad's side. But I didn't realize. I had never thought of doing anything creative. Right. Um, so when it got to the point where I was too little for sports anyways, because all these dudes were like men against boy, uh, this I boy. I understand that way too much, you know. <laughs> yeah. And height I, challenge. That's what I call it. I'm man. height challenged. Well, I, and I just, I didn't hit my growth spurt till 19. So here I am in high school. I'm like, well. You got um, just like me. I was under 5'3", graduating yeah. high school. I'm 5'7", but that came in the, the summer Later. right after. Yeah, late bloomer, which I'm also glad I, I was a late bloomer. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, and yeah, so I didn't have the opportunity to go play sports in college or anything like that. So falling in love with acting, I was like, I'm going to move to L.A. And uh, and I did. I had a really su super supportive family that, you know, even when I was making trash, whatever I was making, they were like, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> um, and that propelled me to take risks and put stuff out there, even though I look back at the old stuff. and I'm like, that was garbage. You had to start somewhere and build and build and build. And, and luckily, I feel like I've finally built some some decent taste buds over the last 20 years. So. Now, with this strong foundation that you're talking about, what were some of the plays that you were a part of in high school? So I was only one, a part of one play. Okay. Um, it was really hard to make the transition from being a jock. Oh, Okay. To a th thespian, right? <laughs> we didn't like we didn't like that word. We're like we don't we're not thespians. Come on, we're like we're like, <laughs> Provado. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, but I, I did one play. It was Forty Second Street, and uh, I played the role of Pat Denning. And um, when there was auditions and stuff, there was talk like, oh, he could get one of the main roles. And luckily, I didn't because I had to, I didn't have the like the work ethic to learn all okay. of the dialogue and everything. I would have just I, uh, I don't think I would have figured it out. You, you would have felt at the lead, things. at mm -hmm. the lead or the second lead or whatever. And it, luckily, I was you know supporting, had like a decent role. But it was a musical. I convinced one of my other buddies to do it with me, and I thought all of my my sports friends would would judge me. Um, mm. You know, as you think, especially when you're younger, you think you care about whatever everybody else thinks. And when I did the play, they were so supportive. Everybody came to the to the play and everything too. So I, that was my first um, first try at, at something um, that I had never done before. And uh, and I and since then, I, I was never a huge fan of musicals. Luckily now, like I'm starting to like see some stuff that I really like. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, but that was that was the first and only that I that I did. And uh, yeah. So now, even though you were in the scene for that and everything, would you say at that time you had more of idea for being to direct or to be a part of? I so the thing about um, 
acting is that that's what we see, right? There's so many other moving parts within filmmaking or TV shows and stuff like that. But I only saw acting because they're front facing. So I was like, oh, that's what I want to do. And then I moved to LA. I was, you know, 20 years old and, and wanted to come out and, and make it in three years and become famous and all of that. And then I got here and I was like, oh shit, you have to like really do a lot of other things. You got to be able to stay out here. Yep. Right. And then you have to, you got to make money, you got to work. And then I also had to grow up out here cause I turned 21 out here and now I'm in the club all the time and doing all of that. So, um, so yeah, so it started with acting. And then once I got out to LA, I got to really spread my creative wings. So I started doing music and then dancing somewhat and then hosting and doing some modeling and some whatever I could get my hands on. So eventually I, I was able to taste everything and, and become better at a lot of those different things, but also analyze and see what I was best at. And then I made the decision to retract from all of that and focus just on writing screenplays for my acting career. Mm -hmm. And then, and then that's when, um, you know, I started getting better as a writer and I could build more projects. And that's why I'm a huge advocate for anybody, especially now in this digital age. If you're an actor, spread your creative wings, see if you can write something or c collaborate with somebody, do a short film. Like you have to start building from there. Um, so now I, I would say I, I'm, I'm getting back into acting this year after taking like okay. a five year break, um, just because I was, you know, doing business and, and all of that. But um, I'm anxious to see what I'm how I'm going to feel in acting classes when I start auditioning, because I do love writing and directing and, and producing. Um, and I want to see if if acting is maybe still my my first love is the main love or if it's mm -hmm. going to be if it's going to be fall in line with writing and directing and then acting after that so or you, if you're gonna be in love with your main and your side chick yeah right yeah which you know not like that not like that <laughs> we're just talking about the, the essence of his work yeah, not the other yeah. stuff the queen is behind the scenes ladies and gentlemen the queen yeah. is behind the scenes hello uh, Jai Ma. Hi. yes 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 keeping me in check <laughs> yes and and um okay because uh, she she did mention about losing a sock mm -hmm. and you know i usually wait to the ending for for the episode to really you know bear gifts and stuff like that. But you guys have been so amazing to me. So I want to kill the suspense over. Oh, God. We got All right, it. so I got you. Hey. The new latest edition. Love it. And the, then, see, now I these you, socks folks. are very, very special. This is their very new logo, new print, new everything. Solid. These are yours. Oh, I love those. No, not everybody has them. I'm wearing a different color underneath here, but... Them or you, because she's been talking happy. about it since day one. And yeah. the fact that she lost the brownies. I'm I know. so sad. But it was one but of we'll mine. So we'll, um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. It's, he'll take mine and, you know. And yeah. I'll definitely be back with them. They were out of small. So I'll be back with the, another sweater for her and oh, everything. Oh, this is and great, man. Some more socks and stuff for you guys. But no, you guys are great. And again, I can say thank you and thank you and thank you and bleed your ears out, which I will do over the course of time. <laughs> but um, dude, like. If it wasn't for those moments in life that you actually gave me your time, gave me understanding and patience, I wouldn't be sitting in this chair right now, oh, really believing you, in myself. Yeah, it's my pleasure, man. And and that's what I, th I think as I, I think it's kind of just part of the process, right? You do something, you figure something out. And I immediately love to give back or like make people aware of, no, 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 don't do it like that. Do it like this, because this will allow you to do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And then not to not make mistakes, because you're going to make mistakes along the way, but um, it almost feels better allowing other people to have the knowledge and seeing what they're able to do. Like their wins feel like my wins too. So right. it's my pleasure, man. And we appreciate this. We've been wearing <laughs> all we, of our shoe We wear the stuff. hell out of shoe yeah, pants. Yeah, yeah. Not gonna thugging lie. and thugging over here. You guys Thank already you, know. Man. And I'm Taking Appreciate this pug that. around the world. You know, baseball season is coming up. MLB bros yeah. and Rob Parker will be sending me to stadiums, talk to players about the shoe game, it's talk exciting, about shoe pugs. Man. So it's a lot of big news coming up. But diving back into the most important news right now. So you said in your 20s, this is when you came out here, you're 20, 21, you know, what were some of your discipline tactics to stay on course of your goals at a, such a young and early age in a city where you're still trying to <clears> find <throat> yourself? Yeah, I, I, well, I think one of the things was I wasn't disciplined. And that's why, like, you know, it took me a long time to to grow up out here. And not that I was out there, like, wild and it was, like, doing crazy things for the most part. But it was, like, I was disciplined. But the only thing I was doing was, the uh, only thing I was disciplined in was the gym. 
I would go to the gym six days a week. I thought like that was what I needed to do. And that correlated to some of my success as an actor because pretty much everything I got was shirtless at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. So like I was like, oh, this is working. But then everything that my agent was sending me out was like, oh, let's play a gigolo in this. And I was like, oh, mm. you know, which I know specifically happens mostly, I think, to women, which it's, it's such a fine line, um, you know, because y- you just you want to make the money, you want to get the roles. But you have to if you're not doing something that you love or is super important to you. Um, then is it really worth it at the end of the day? You don't want to pigeonhole yourself. Um, but uh, so I was disciplined within the gym and I was disciplined because of playing sports growing up. Um, but I think the biggest thing I would say that helped me in my 20s was I was absolutely fearless. I was always working on something. I didn't realize I was an entrepreneur. I just thought I wanted to create a music showcase because <laughs> I just thought like, oh, let's just do that. And then I'd had two and I had two weeks. Then my band was playing at both. And then I was, I, I was just, I was always curious. I was never afraid to try anything. So even though when I started doing After Buzz TV, I was hosting, I was around, around all these amazing hosts and I didn't have any business being a host. But I got to, I ended up doing hundreds of podcasts and making so many connections in that space and other genres of, of, of uh, entertainment. And that just over the course of time, over that decade, by then I had made, I, I had amassed a big um, network. I had learned what I was great at and not so great at. And then um, from there, with that new data, I was able to analyze it and then and just really narrow in on my focus. And then that's when things started happening. So I think the lack of discipline allowed me to really see what I was, what I wanted to do and try everything. And then eventually learning how much hard work it actually takes to be successful um, and having the discipline from sports and all that stuff in the past, then I was able to like, okay, now I'm ready to go at it. And it was only was after like eight years or a decade of being out here already. Okay. So what was the first gig that you were able to come across that got you really on the path of going in that direction? The first gig... The first gig that I, that, let's see, probably Tosh.0 was probably the first hey. gig, which is funny because it was <laughs> wild. But um, <clears throat> I learned so much in that experience because I, I had auditioned for something, got a role um, in one of his commercials for like the premiere of the season. Mm-hmm. And then <clears throat> and then they called back to have um, me on another episode. And I was like, oh, okay, let's do it. And that got me, I had to then join AFTRA. Which after and SAG a couple years later then merged and I got um, grandfathered in pretty much to uh, to SAG, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and that was it was super funny and weird and cool or whatever seeing all the sketches and everything but seeing how t- how Daniel Tosh works and how like wardrobe messed up something um, in one of the sketches that we did and he was like pissed but he kept it his composure and then he went with him and like two writers and maybe a producer and they went like 50 yards that way they figured out the joke they came back and then delivered and it was brilliant and seeing how like something could go wrong in producing you learn that anything that can go wrong will go wrong but seeing how you can fix something and make it even better than maybe it was before so seeing his work ethic and how he how he delivered was really cool uh for me to understand at that age um i think you know has helped me as i've navigated my my life as a director writer as well now now on sets, did you have plenty of bloopers or mess ups or anything like that? And what were your what were your tactics in order to gain your composure and still smash it like like they did? Yeah, yeah. Well, I um, <clears throat> my, one of my favorite experiences was a, a web series that I did. Um, it was, it was uh, I co directed it and, and acted in it with some of my friends, and uh, and it was kind of slapstick comedy it's mm-hmm. a piece called uh, the rub and the finished product ended up being like it was all right but it was one of the best times i had ever had on set and that was because we were improvising a lot of it uh, it was it was all written it was pretty funny as is but once we got into character and having those moments and like breaking you know like the stuff you see after you watch step brothers you watch all the outtakes you're like fuck i want to do that one day mm-hmm. and um so so m- from my acting experience within working with Aaron Spicer, who's my coach, he, um, you know, you just learn to go with it. It's not about the lines or flubbing or whatever. So just making things truthful, whether it's comedy or drama. And uh, luckily, based on my preparation and in, in, in the school that I had done um, within acting, I was able to be super comfortable on set. 
I was relaxed. And even when things would go wrong, you could use those as opportunities to make it even better, you know, back to Daniel Tosh. But, um, but yeah, so that's, that's, that's what the main thing is that a, a break in a scene is not a mistake. It's, mm. it's, it's real life, right? If you're in a moment and this is what I'm excited about getting back into acting just so I can be super fluent in my instrument and all of that is like, if you can get out there and be relaxed and take every opportunity and just follow and see where it goes until somebody says cut, um, you never know what's going to happen. So versus like, I need to get all the, I need all the, the lines to be perfect, you know? So life's not perfect. Acting's not perfect. And you never, you never know what you're going to get if you just try to live truthfully in a scene. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're relaxed enough and you've, you've done the, the, the work, then, you know, you'll see what can happen and great things can happen. And there's a blessing in every lesson. And again, you cannot learn from a mistake if you don't make any. Yeah, yeah. So that that to me means more than you actually even think. But the main big enchilada, Mastermind Media, what projected that into you and out to the world? Because it's amazing. And you're covering so many different outlets and stuff. So when did this come become an establishment? And when did you feel like, I need to open more doors in different uh, aspects. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's the the key to our growth has been um, evolving as the times have been evolving. And luckily, based on my first decade of trying everything, then when we're working with, you know, people creatively, so Mastermind Media is a digital agency. So we're, we're people's digital uh a partner to the digital world and from social media management, which starts with content creation. Luckily I'd learned how to make horrible content and then better content. Right. <laughs> so now people make less Trial mistakes because I can. Yeah. Yeah. So that, and then learning strategy and business and everything, we, we opened our doors in 2016. Um, I think it was August 8th, 2016 it was the first client, first post. And, uh, and based on, my past experiences and based on my newfound knowledge within the world of business, thanks to um, Gary V was a big like North star for me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was like, okay, I think we have something special because I can work from my phone and be anywhere before I was always, I had always to, you know, I was working at restaurants for primarily my first 10 years out here. So then I, I, I started understanding, okay, I can work from my phone. I can shoot content. I can distribute it. I can engage with the target demographic. Um, why don't I just continue doing this? So, you know, I had some, some uninformed optimism at the beginning. Cause you're like, Oh, I can just do this. You get two clients right out the gate and then six months happens and then things recalibrate and you lose some clients, gain some clients and all of that. But I, I realized that I had a special gift, which was I had the creative knowledge and I had the business knowledge and I could communicate it and help people uh, clear the fog is what, what somebody has told me recently. And, um, and I, I just became really passionate with that. So I started telling everybody what they need to do because everybody is a potential client because everybody right. needs social media in my opinion. And once I started just helping people get to where they wanted to go, then they started referring me as things started evolving. And then from social media management, then came lookbook design for, for people to pitch TV shows and films, which then in, turned into logos and full branding packages for companies, um, and then turned podcasting. And, uh, and now, like, as we continue to evolve... Um, it's just always like, okay, what's going on uh, on out there? Let's let's analyze the the current state of the world and let's continue to help people get to where they want to go and not fall in love with how everything used to be. Right. Let's continue to evolve as the times do because everybody, for the most part, just is late to the party. So if you're always late to the party, but our clients, as soon as something new comes out, we help them learn it. You know, AI is coming out, Chat GPT, all of these yeah. things. So like this is how you need to do it. This is what you should do. And um, you know, that's, that's what I'm really passionate about internally is, is allowing us to do really great work, but then helping everybody that we're working with get to where they want to go, use the internet as leverage for their business so they can live their best life as well. Exactly. Because I just saw you recently sat down with some high school kids, yeah, you know, and giving yeah. them the tips and traits on, you know, how to conduct themselves in the business and get everything from the ground up and actually get out of their own ways of thinking and get things going. Yeah. So, First, before we get into that, thank you, because again, everything for me, it's Mastermind or nothing, this, uh, this amazing logo came from, you know, the team of Mastermind, and again, I cannot say thank you guys enough. Sure. We got an amazing journey going, you know, and I wouldn't change it for anything. So thank you. Absolutely. But yes, 
you you helped a lot of kids, you know, uh, over the weekend and stuff like that. So elaborate on that. Yeah. So um, I went and spoke at uh, Newport Harbor High School in Costa Mesa, California. California. Is it Costa Mesa or is Newport and Newport? It was Costa Mesa. Yeah. Sorry, I was watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, a, a big reason why I wanted to speak to high school students, because um, I, I spoke to the media and the, and the business side of things. And whoever I speak to, you know, I want to see what their interests are. That way I can guide them. Um, properly. Um, but a big reason why I wanted to start speaking in high schools was to help people not help these kids not make the mistake of being a dick on the internet in, tw- in you know, in their, while you're in high school, this stuff's going to follow you your whole life. So if I could come in and and teach them how to be kind and how to use the, their, this, their apps at their, at their fingertips for good, then they won't have to make some of the mistakes that are going to haunt them and make it more difficult in the future. So that was that was the that was the, how things started. Um, but going this time, going to speak to the media and business students, um, it was like how to use the internet properly, mm-hmm. um, how to um, really find out who they are, how to silence the noise of their parents or outside sources or their friends or what they need to do and what college they need to go and all of that really how, how do you silence the noise and then how do you use the internet to then build your dreams and uh and yeah i had a really really great time and that kind of opened the doors to do a few other things so really excited to continue speaking to high schools i'm starting i have a couple college um uh talks coming up in like february march so i'm gonna start speaking more colleges and uh, again, just continue to whatever, whatever I'm learning and that's working, you know, go help these people. Because one of the things ab- about some of these schools is that they, they teach the old ways or like, you know, they're not fully up to date, up to date. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then also like a lot of these students just keep on jumping to, you know, degree after degree because they don't want to go out into the real world. And um, which I which I understand. Um, but I, I just w- like to use my experience to hopefully guide them in a way just so they can understand the opportunities that are out there, how to use the Internet, which is for free to, tr- to start right. um, and to um, maybe make their future a little bit brighter. When, when I was in high school, I didn't really have anybody. I had one person, one coach that flew out to um, Detroit. He was from Detroit and like taught acting. And I had him as somebody I could call and ask about certain questions. But it wasn't, it was, I just, I just, there's so much more, so much more at your fingertips that you can do. Um, and I wish I had some of this knowledge or, you know, we didn't really have the internet like we do now. So I just want to, I want the younger demographic not to fall into the pitfalls of what society thinks they should do. Mm-hmm. And instead, um, I, I implore them to um, f- figure themselves out and, um, and to build something beautiful online that could evolve into something. Um, and I think most of them aren't aware of that right now. Right. Instead of, you know, some of them are just, you know, chit chatting in little cyber cafes, playing Counter Strike and all yeah, that other yeah. stuff, instead of learning coding, creating your mm-hmm. own businesses and stuff like that, being your own entrepreneur. Yeah. So, yeah. which is an effort for everyone, right? And that's part of figuring yourself out. Um, uh, my sister said it on on, uh, on one of my podcasts. She said people that want to be entrepreneurs because they just want to be their own boss, but they're not really necessarily a great leader or want to be a great leader. Mm -hmm. And that's what it takes. Like entrepreneurship sucks. Oh yeah. It's the worst (laughs) and the best thing I think at the same time. And, and if you're not built for it, if you're not dedicated and you're not willing to put a a couple decades in, then figure yourself out and and maybe there's a different professions for you. Uh, But if it is for you, then you got to put that work in. Anything that you love is going to take time. Yeah. So yeah. it's just as well as if you're, you know, you love a sport or something, you're going to put a lot of time into that. You have to. You're going to put a lot of effort into it. You know, if you don't prepare ahead, you're just planning on failing. Yeah, absolutely. So um, and and speaking on that, as far as Mastermind Media, now, how many people would you say are currently under under the umbrella? Um, so as far as like employees or. Yeah. Um, yeah. So our team, our team is about uh, 12 deep now, I think something like that. And uh, and we bring our re- uh, interns regularly as well. Mm-hmm. So um, so, yeah, I think there's a lot of advantages of being a boutique agency. We're really able to help each of our clients individually. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, we're slowly but surely growing, but yeah, having a team that's, you know, really dedicated to helping people and really hungry. Um, mm-hmm. it's been, it's been a blast. Yeah. Cause you guys are heavy on the tech support, but even heavier on the personal support. Yeah. Yeah. Cannot I think it's important you enough. for sure, man. It's just, everybody is different. So you have to lead people differently. And then also, you know, I think w- one of our one of the best things about our company um, is the truthfulness. Like if you mm-hmm. just send me something, it sucks. I'm going to tell you. And um, 
and it's not because and you could you can agree to disagree. And there is sometimes where maybe I don't understand this the kind of creative, and I'll say it's not really my vibe, but I think it could really work for you. Mm-hmm. But if you're gonna send trash, I don't want you to be out there in the world with trash branding or whatever. It's just like, you know, you. Ha- we're able to say it in a way. I think people respect us for that. You know, you have you have to have the right people around you to give you that right and, and how to give you that right advice and be truthful. But um, it's been a, a bit a really big um, advantage. I think we've had because we're not just trying to do something to make money and go out there and see whatever. It's like no, this has to be right. Absolutely, um, you guys' track record and work ethic speaks for itself. You know, anything that comes out of this this studio and everything is tip top shape. Oh, thank and you, if it isn't, it's not going out. Yeah, I know that yeah. for a fact. You guys even hit me up like, hey, man, you might want to redo that. Or actually, we're going to upgrade the phone thing. Yeah. And just get back on that. We're, we're working on that again. Yeah, we're back yeah. from two to back to one. <laughs> but um, uh, one thing that I did want to allude to as far as the team and everything, I love the the family oriented and yeah. stuff like that. Like, it doesn't feel like it's like a business relationship with you guys. It feels like it's real personal and it's real, very professional as well. But I can call you about nothing that has to do with anything that we're talking about right now. It sure. can just be some life life stuff absolutely you know so uh that is one thing that i definitely want a lot of people to get a better understanding of who you're doing business with it's not just about doing business it's also about doing pleasure yeah, having yeah. personality and personal issues come in the part of it too so you can kind of navigate around it and stuff like that yeah yeah i think i've been thinking on the design of life a lot lately and just like what it takes right like this design of life yeah you can go out there like if you want what you want to happen you have to go out and put the work in and it's really difficult but you surround yourself with the right people it gets a little bit easier not that it's easy and it's like a cakewalk but it's more or less like you're around the right people that can continue to propel you forward and if you're not out there doing that you're staying at home but based on the design of life you could be at home eating trash food not getting sun and like something could come at you there too so it's like yeah you know he's speaking to me it happened it happened ladies and gentlemen Uh, (laughs) but that's the thing so i think depending on who you're working with is especially in a creative space like your creative and the content you're putting out to the world is super personal Mm -hmm. and if if um and if if people are wise enough i wouldn't even say wise enough i would say if people are What's the word? Conscious enough? Or just brave enough. Mm-hmm. I think if people are brave enough to go out and go after something, then there's already like it's all you're super vulnerable because things could break and, you know, and crash and burn right in front of your face. So the fact that people are trusting us with their dreams, their creative dreams, mm-hmm. They're coming to us, so I think that's where you know it's super important to be super professional, but also um, have the, the the personal side of things and ensure that everybody is aware of everything that's going on, how things, you know, what they're spending their money with us on, and how it's going to help them in the future. And if things aren't doing well, it's like okay, let's adjust and analyze and change. It doesn't mean you suck if you're not getting viewership yet. It means you're early to the game. So I, that's why I think you know because people are trusting us with their dreams. Mm-hmm. Um, you really have to be, you have to have the, the personal touch. And luckily if, you know, we have a really strong team, maybe not luckily, maybe, um, you know, gratefully, <laughs> uh, we, have, we currently have a really strong team that, that really cares about the work that we're doing as well. And is super meticulous about, um, ensuring that it's like in tip top shape, like you said. Now we're going to go back into personal, back into work because you have some amazing work. And I personally want to talk about this amazing film called Rudolph that he's been working on for quite some time. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. The trailer pff, blew me off the water. Pause. But yeah, it's it's amazing. And I just want, want you to share with the world what it represents and everything. Because I don't think that if you haven't seen the trailer, you won't get it. So explain yeah. to them what it's about. Yeah, and this is and this um, it's probably pretty hard to find um, currently. Actually, no, we just we just reposted it. Um, Rudolph was I came across it accidentally. I had a friend, uh, a producing friend, reach out and ask if I had any Christmas projects. Um, and I'm not—I was never into like the Lifetime and Hallmark style of of um, Christmas films. Although I have written one, and my mother is a huge fan of them. So maybe so I'll, instead of like huge, Jingle yeah. All the Way, <laughs> instead of like Jingle All the Way or all those movies, you're well, more like, like a Krumpus. Well, even oh, that, yeah. Night, yeah, yeah, you know, Nightmare. I know, would say Jingle Christmas. All the Way, but I would just say a lot of these, you know, like the Lifetime and Hallmark films that like. It looks like the same two people doing every film. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the so, same you know, same script, just, just a, a little, little different. Little, 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 little cheesy, too cheesy for me. But um, but I wanted 
uh, with the Rudolph Project, and it's spelled R-U-D-O-L-F. Um, it's an indie feature um, where basically what I did was I personified the characters from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and I uh, made them kids in a high school basketball team. And in this world, the Rudolph story doesn't exist yet. So this would be the story that a young Robert May, who wrote the original story, if he was in, in high school today and he saw what was going on with these different characters, Ryan Rudolph, Brock Dasher, Jade Blitzen, et cetera, um, this would inspire him based on the bullying and overcoming all odds and all that kind of stuff to write the children's uh, book in like mm-hmm. in current and present times. And, uh, you know, I, we did the, we did the trailer. We put it out to the world and we the idea was using the internet like we do for everything use the internet as leverage and made we tricked the internet into thinking it already existed so that it would go more viral and 85 percent of the people loved it the other 15 percent hated it and came at me sideways which um eventually i really grew to love (laughs) um in the moment it was tough when you know we're on world star and like all these different, um, different platforms on Reddit and everything. People come in from my head, but, um, but I learned, uh, I learned who I was as a filmmaker at that moment. Cause I want, I never want to put anything out that's right down the middle. And, uh, and yeah, so, you know, we've, we've come a long way with the project. We've had some deals on the table that haven't been right. Um, but we're, we're, yeah, we're, um, assembling a team now of, of producers and, and uh, different attachments to, to get it made ASAP. Um, but one thing about me, I'm super patient. And if things aren't right, then they're not going to get made that way. And uh, especially with the projects that are, are really um, close to my heart. And with this one, you know, I didn't want to just make it just to make it. And I didn't want to just write it and have somebody else direct it. This is something that, we, you know, I wrote, directed, produced, edited, you mm-hmm. know, and, and I, I know what I want it to be. And it's my art and it's my voice. And uh, as long as it takes to make, we'll, we'll uh, eventually make it. And uh, I think it'll be sooner than later, though. We're getting really close. I agree. Um, just seeing the trailer again. And it's pretty like you're, you're sitting there, you're kind of intense because the story behind it. Mm-hmm. And just seeing how, again, I'm just now knowing this is before the even story existed. Yeah. So, yeah. um, and, and that's with this piece, the hardest part about this, this film is like, where do you, where's the line? Mm-hmm. And like, where is it a kid's film or is it a kids and adult film? Or is it straight adult where you make it super indie? Um, I think, um, I, I want to make it PG because I want my, um, my niece and nephew would be able to watch it. Um, and I think the, the lessons that the kids will learn through it, that's why I'm leaning more that way. But, um, but part of me wants to make a super indie, like rated R version Mm -hmm. that like, you know, you gotta have a director's cut. Yeah. (laughs) You gotta have a director's cut. So that might, we might save that for the third one, you know, as we do a Rudolph every single year as he progresses in his journey as a, as a basketball player and professional. So no, but uh, I'm big advocate on understanding the, you know, the future. Yeah. And also tying in, you know, the past, which is, will be us, the older generation, yeah. and getting a better understanding of each. Because there's going to be a point in time where one feels, you know, not understood and the other one feels like they don't understand. So I think this film is going to actually help a lot, especially doing the PG thing. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, I think that storytelling is so important and what your voice is and how you portray that in your in your in any kind of media yes um and uh but yeah, i'm looking forward to making it it was it was a dream making the piece and the and the the people we worked with we shot it in my hometown in detroit so um so yeah i want to it's that's why like how we make it is important i want to make it in detroit because i want to showcase detroit as well and in, in, in the in a really great light most of the films that have taken place in detroit like really expose the the negative things about it and I want it. I want to showcase the the beautiful side of Detroit. So people, you know, if people have never been in Detroit, they just think it's a shithole or cold. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah. One of those is true. Yeah. I'm it's shivering not. thinking about it. Yeah, absolutely, but um, but yes, yeah, so I want to go do that and just just put Detroit on the map in a different way um, as it continues to evolve. Because over like the last decade, it's been really, really great to see what what they've done there. Yeah, Motor City coming a far away, mm-hmm. far, far away. And speaking of something that's coming a <clears throat> far away, the Rodriguez Project. Yeah. Please allude to the incredibleness that that's going on on it. I love it. I love the guests that you've been bringing on. You're very charismatic, bro. Very. Thanks, I'm, I'm definitely taking notes on how to pro, you know progress in my you know field. Yeah. By watching you and yours. Well, and if you if you watch my old stuff, if you watch my stuff on After Buzz TV when I first started, <laughs> the first ever podcast I did was Kim and Chloe take New York, and it was um, wow. it was an after show. I was I was sitting at a table like this. If I close my eyes, I can almost be back there at this desk and there's cameras and the people I was speaking to had, I had headphones on, I was speaking to them in New York. 
So they weren't what? even in. And so the camera's just on me the whole time. And I'm just like just sitting there. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't know how to like elaborate on how I'm feeling. Plus, I didn't really care about the show. Mm-hmm. But that was my first my my first opportunity at After Buzz to then eventually started doing the voice and American Idol and X Factor, et cetera. And became like the music guy that had an opinion and like was like the, you know, the host that would fill in the gaps between like the main host. And uh, but I got to be super um, comfortable because it was live television. Right. So like people are watching it live on the Internet and then afterwards and it would go on YouTube and Spotify everywhere. But um, but eventually you stop worrying about how it's how it's going to go. And, you know, and you relax again, any kind of any kind of art. If you're relaxed, you can go out there and just be yourself and just do whatever's going to happen. Mm-hmm. You still make mistakes. But we, we got to the point where we were like, I'd grab my guitar right before we went out. And I'd be like, all right, let's let's write a song like five minutes before we come up with a little. And I would just go play it at the very beginning of the show. So, again, that fearlessness was just something that really helped me there. Um, but after doing hundreds of podcasts, then I started my own The Rodriguez Project, which it's all about living a life worth writing a movie about. So mm-hmm. the guests that I have or the things that we, t- we talk about um, are, are, are all about overcoming all odds and the pitfalls. I, I love talking about the negative things in life and how to overcome mm. them. Just so we don't, you know, the, the world of social media, we always portray our highlight reel on all of our digital platforms. And if you take a step back and you start sharing your truthfulness and like, and you start sharing your, um, you know, the things that have gone in your life, you just you become just ready to take on the world and people start seeing you in a new light. And if you don't care that you're showing the negative experiences, then people can't use those negative experiences against you. And um, so I've been really lucky to have a lot of really great guests that have done some amazing things and talk about the the really difficult times in their life and how they've overcome and then how they've thrived afterwards. I'm a strong believer in you cannot hide your hurt or else you'll never heal from it. Facts. So suffering in silence won't get you where you're trying to go. Yeah. For sure. Absolutely. I love that. So I have my awesome Blast from the Past segment. Yeah. And I definitely got some amazing stuff for you. Because, again, behind the scenes, I'm a fan. Again, he sings and dance, too. Uh, <laughs> well, I thought I could dance until I moved to L.A. Then I was like, oh, no, you guys can dance. I can just moonwalk. So you think you can dance? Uh, for real, he had one of those moments. <laughs> That's such a great show. It'll be left. Okay. So... Oh, oh. He said he started off oh with the God. shirts off. <laughs> so, Look at that jawline. For very scope, right? Yeah. Right? Wow. Look at those traps. Look at his, his. Are you biting your cheeks that hair. for that? No, that's just normal. <laughs> that's just normal. That so, yes. Oatmeal in the morning, <laughs> tuna fish, $5 foot long for lunch. Hey. Like two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches before bed, after dinner, just so I could continue. That was balling on a budget. Food of champions. For real. Mm-hmm. That's how you get those traps. Yeah. <laughs> balling yeah. on a budget. Yeah, but that's, that's the time in my, in my life where I just, that's all I cared about was, was the gym. And was dedicated to that. And then um, so I'd always make time for that and, uh, you know, having that discipline. But um, (laughs) that's all I really had time, made time for. Oh, I know that world way too well as far as being in the gym. I used to be a manager for LA Fitness in 24. How I even got into LA Fitness, I was there so freaking much. I wasn't even in the state. I got a phone call from them. I was in (laughs) Alabama or New York at the time. Got a phone call like, hey, we've been looking for you about like a month now. Uh, we have a position and we just want you for it. You're oh, a good wow. people person. And from that, it's transitioned me into who I am today. But I will say um, all good things do come to an end yeah, yeah, for a new yeah. beginning. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and this, uh, but this was, yeah, this was my days of top <laughs> point of and <laughs> and ass, but look at that I was hair, trying to hold it in too. so much. <laughs> this, I think I took this picture. Awesome. I took this picture, I think I had to send to a modeling agency mm-hmm. or somebody. I think that's what I did. I remember I, I set my phone was or my camera. America's top model? No. <laughs> For real, right? It wasn't. Well, he was, was dancing like at models. this time, but models, I guess so. he didn't think he could. This is my awesome. So, my soap opera pose. Mm-hmm. But that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That guy was fearless, but... Uh, this guy was even more fearless. <laughs> was even this more. is the singer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this was my first time ever getting close to having a viral video on the internet, on YouTube. My whole tactic there was to do covers of successful musicians and do covers of their song that was super different and more of my style. And we broke this one down. I recorded it at my buddy's place, and then we did a lip sync to it at my other friend's place in Hollywood. And uh, I used some new tactics. It was my first time using the internet like this. <laughs> and it started going crazy viral. And I was like, oh, shit, this is it. This is it. I need to take that and put that. And, like, and I, did, I did one move that I thought would help it. 
And um, this is when you could post a you could post a video as a comment on somebody else's viral video. And okay. if they approved it, as soon as people watch the video, they go down to the to the comments, and then your Yours video would be there. there. So they see a cover, and they just love the take care uh, song. Mm -hmm. So they approved mine, and I was there. I was getting crazy viewership. And then I was like, okay, let me put it on another one. And when you put it on another one, and that one gets approved, it takes it off the other one. So I lost the virality of the first one. So it went like it got like ten thousand views in the first day, and it was started really blowing up. I'm like, oh shit! So I started trying to maximize it, and then got too greedy. I did. Well, not too. Greedy. I was just <laughs> yeah, somewhat, maybe somewhat, but I was, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I was super <laughs> depressed for like a week. Like, damn, that was you would have like because it would have been million views potentially, um, just off of that one. Yeah, seriously. yeah. But that was that was yeah, it was fun times. Another fun time. Yeah. This, <laughs> Tell this, us about this. This happened by accident. I was I was actually, I just started Mastermind. I had one client and I was going into Starbucks on Melrose every day. Mm -hmm. um, pretty sure I slept in my car before <laughs> this this day too. Oh. So basically um, I would sleep in my car sometimes because um, I was... Um, I was couch surfing and, and whatnot, but I used to sleep. There was one song or one um, street south of Melrose. So it was like Melrose and Stanley is where that that happened um, at Starbucks. And I ended up going there and I was preparing to go pitch this restaurant. Um, so I was building one of my first pitch decks to go tell them. And I actually signed them, too. So I went there and as I was I was I was there. They asked me to come back the next day because they're like, hey, um, we want you to be in this. Um, it was an audition or nothing. They were just doing the sketch there. They saw me. I was at the table and they're like, hey, do you want to be in this? I was like, yeah. And I did one little thing. And she's like, hey, come back tomorrow. So wear, this, yeah. wear the same thing. <laughs> so then um, I went and pitched them signed them on as a client the next day i came back wearing the same exact thing and then um i'm trying to see what's going to happen it was all improv improvised so james corden comes and sits down next to me and he told me to do an al pacino accent or no it was him and the director they're doing a whole um whole movie inside that starbucks that took place in that in that starbucks so it was a super funny bit it was called like um some, like Starbucks theater or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, he sat down and I had never really practiced an Al Pacino um, accent, <laughs> but he basically goes like, okay, you have a knife. Like the director was directing me and he's like, you have a knife. And he's like, all right, we don't have a knife. He grabs a, um, a straw because he's using all stuff from, um, from Starbucks. <laughs> Starbucks. And then I, so I, gra I grabbed uh, James Corden and the dude gave me the lines and I did my best Al Pacino and actually came out pretty, pretty solid. Yeah. And, I, and then he was like, oh, okay. But, and then I ended it with uh, hoorah. Mm -hmm. um, like he says, and one of the he's like, and then James Corden was like, no, no, it's a young Al Pacino, <laughs> not old, but uh, but it was a, yeah, it was perfect. And this was the this is the thumbnail on the YouTube, so awesome. um, got a mm -hmm. lot of attention, it has like millions of views, and it was the first of uh, of a series that he did. You're like, where is he now? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, me or James Corden? Oh, he's that's him now. No, he is now. Oh, wow, <laughs> that's awesome. Please tell me about this. You look like your dad. When I dug this one up, I was just like. What was the concept and how did this even get to this point? Yeah, yeah. Well, this is when there was an there was an app that everybody was doing their the older versions of themselves. And I was at a doctor. I was at my I was not at a doctor's office. Well, kind of uh, physical ther uh, physical therapist. And uh, that's when I had a I was literally sitting there waiting to go to this physical therapist that wasn't doing shit. They were just like they were bad. And uh, I had um, a wing scapula, so my my shoulder blade was detached from my my. Um, my back, so I couldn't. I couldn't even raise my arm up, which is very, you know, he probably can't either. <laughs> I'm looking um, at this picture like, do you use this picture to get senior citizen discounts? Uh, I know. <laughs> we should try get those that. discounts yeah. in, you know. But yeah, I, I did it. I was like blown away by it because I do feel like I look like my like my dad a lot, but my dad's side of the family, mm -hmm. and um, and it's it's just crazy based on these apps seeing what children you might have or what you might look like because now it's so realistic. Mm -hmm. um, oh God, we did imagine. a children one. A children one between. I saw that. Yeah. I, again, cute I'm a kids, fan. Cute really? kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's awesome. I forgot. I forgot. That's my that. man right there. Yeah. He's an old man. He's old, mm -hmm. an old man. <laughs> this by far is my favorite picture of you. Really? Yes. It, it it screams greatness, but it's not the greatness that. It's more so the greatness that you give everybody behind you. Mm. So. When I see the picture on a regular basis, it's overly inspiring because I could be one of those people behind you as well. But oh. I'm actually able here to sit in front of you. Oh, thanks. So, man. like, tell everyone about what you were doing and how this even came to to fruition. Well, it was a pretty epic story. Um, <clears throat> so this is at Lollapalooza in maybe twenty. 
21 or two. Yeah, it must be 2021. And uh, my neighbor and one of my good friends, Eddie, came over and he wanted to use my uh, my foam roller because mm-hmm. his back was hurting. And he co- I'm like, yeah, come down. He starts using it and he, he's like on, on the floor. He's like, hey, do you want to go to Lollapalooza? I was like, yeah, I'm down. <laughs> And he goes, and he's on the road. He calls his boss in Chicago. He's like, hey, um, hey, Mark's going to come too. Get him a VIP bracelet. Yeah, yeah. No, he's going to stay with us too. All right. Later. <laughs> Hangs up. He's like, all right, you're good. And I'm like, what? What the? F-? You just, uh, like, just go to me lo- into a free ticket? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, my, my buddy Eddie, um, his connects in, in uh, Chicago really took care of us. But this was... Um, What's the name of the band? Uh, Jimmy Eat World was performing mm. on the stage right there. And we had backstage, but we didn't have back backstage. Okay. So we had to lie our way into it. So we looked so at the- So y'all had side stage and then backstage. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so one, one of the things that I believe in life is that it, there's always a way. Yes. And one thing, like, listen, there's going to be gatekeepers, but if you can get through it, <laughs> you can go have a great time. Mm-hmm. So we had- um, we had. Uh, I, I looked at the woman's list as my friend was talking to her and I saw one of the names and I, and I saw, I said one of the other names that was on the list and they ended up letting us through. And, uh, and then as we go up, we're like walking backstage and I was like, I think we actually went and saw Jimmy world there. We're there and everything. And then we were leaving. I was like, Oh, let me get a pic real quick. And then I was walking up and then Eddie threw me my phone. He said, no, act like you're on the phone real quick. And then, and that was the post. And then the the caption for the post was, uh, <laughs> "Hold on, I can't hear you. Let me let me go backstage real quick. I think or let yeah. me go in the other room." <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, we had a we had a blast and uh, maybe had too much fun while we were in Chicago there. But I love Chicago, and uh, yeah, it was just a really great experience. So um, what a story. I like yeah, I love what it right, uh, what it what it means to you. Yeah. Uh, um, Did you just yeah. ruin his? No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it added it added more pizzazz to it, yeah, honestly. Yeah. Because hey, like he said, where there's a will, there's a way. So that just means let me just get on my phone next time and act like oh, I'm supposed yeah, to be here. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm supposed yeah. to be here. Let me go in the other room real quick. Yes. The what cur- the inspired current this amazement right here? <laughs> well, an Instagram post, but um, I would say Jai inspired it. Yes. Jai inspired it because, you know, Jai being a stylist and um, and somebody who I can confide in and tells me the truth to. Um, not a hairstylist, uh, by the not way. A, yeah, not a hairstylist. <laughs> yeah, my sister did it. Um, who is a hairstylist. Who is a hairstylist. But um, I would never take the creative leaps with my... Um, my wardrobe or my hair or whatever, like my style as a whole, if it wasn't for Jai. Um, she's helped me see style in a whole different way. And being a creative, like I don't want to be just the other, another dude walking in the room wearing the same thing everybody else is wearing. I don't take like huge risks all the time. But um, but this was a, a big jump for me. But luckily, based on how Jai had helped like mold me into um, somebody, that, somebody that can express themselves uh, through what they wear and how they present themselves to the world. And now I'm just, now I'm ready for every creative risk. So I had, you know, went blonde and did a couple of different colors. And then this, uh, we had seen something on the, on, on Instagram and I had it saved for a long time. I was like, I want to do the leopard print. The leopard, the leopard. And we did it. We did a video and, uh, and it was still, it wasn't like, Oh, I was just did that. I was, it was easy. Like the next day, I was like, "Oh fuck!" Like this was right before I went to go speak at the high school too. I'm like, "Do I shave it off? Or like, what, like, do I just show up?" Like, you know. So um, we're showing up, yeah, and yeah. showing out for sure. Yeah. So now, now I just I love taking creative leaps. Um, I like already like doing it with my work, but being able to do it with my style and stuff too. Uh, it just it's another. It's so freeing to not give a fuck what anybody else thinks, mm-hmm. and and I think that screams that. <laughs> yeah, and it actually definitely screams versatility within you. Yeah, because yeah, like you yeah. said, you were. Kind Kind of like I wouldn't say stuck in a corner, but you were complacent in your way for sure, and allow that to open up and allow this blossoming flower to really let you grow as well. Sure, it's awesome. It's yeah. freaking awesome. I wouldn't be able to do it. Unfortunately, I've been like wavy hair since I want to say freshman sophomore year of high school. Oh yeah, it's just been like this. A lot of people were just always asking me like, "What do you do?" And it's like, "No, I can do this." Oh it yeah, bother <laughs> me. you can't do that to the other regular people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, dude. I can't wait for the next awesome thing that you come up with. Yeah, it should be interesting what we're going to do next. And, and one of the... In, in the um, Zebra print? Oh! I'll do it. Hey, get her done. Uh, well, that, and, and one of the one of the um, animals in my superhero superhero universe that I'm building is a leopard. So um, shout out to him in the future. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Yes. The Express. So now memory lane, man. We are definitely at the near dear of the episode. And this is the point where I'll really try to get the guests to express themselves so the world can get a better understanding of them. Okay. okay. So if you had to express yourself in a way that there is no turning back, they know what it is and it is what it is, what would you share with the world? Hmm. So if I was to express myself, you know, uh, I guess I'll kind of encompass everything that we've been speaking about today. It's like patience is a huge, a huge thing and everybody wants to make it. And you even hear like people make it in the first year, first three years or like it takes 10 years to become an overnight success. I'm a true believer based on my journey that the second decade is like is the greatest. Right. Mm-hmm. People, you know ask me like, oh, how did you able to do this? Or how do you know all these people? Whatever. I'm like, well, I've been here 18 years and I still feel like I'm just getting started. So if you want to uh, stunt your growth and burn out quickly, don't be patient. (laughs) Right. But if you can have patience, you don't want it to be, you don't want it to cripple you either. Where you're like, I can just, whatever happens. But having that patience, I always say work like you need it tomorrow, but have the patience that you don't need it, you know, don't need it for 10 years. And there's something about that mindset that has just allowed me to like never judge my current state too much and always su- be super grateful for whatever, whatever state of mind or in business or success that I'm in. And, um, and, and I just really urge people to, align with something that they love and not everybody can do it right you have different restrictions depending on where you are in the world who is around you uh you know your your skill set um you know if you have a family it's hard to make time for you know those things but um but if you can align yourself with something that you love and you can pick a north star based on somebody that you've seen do what you want to do and you even understand their story, that's going to help propel you in the right direction. And once you're in the game, you're going to get bounced around. It's like a pinball game. You're going to get bounced around, whatever. But the more, the longer you play, the better you get at it. So things start really getting fun in a decade or two or three. And if you have that mindset, I think you can really make anything come true and you don't, you don't have to, um, you know, give yourself this unrealistic timeline. You know, um, and then that's that's when, it's when it gets super fun. So um, so that's how I, w- I would express myself. It would be do what you love, give yourself the time and uh, and put in the right amount of work to, to make everything come true. Be patient. You'll get there when you get there. But proper preparation will actually lead to execution. Absolutely. So you gave that to me when I was coming out of, you know, a tough time in life. And I've been every day putting that to forth, putting that to use and just making it a part of me and not just something that I do, but something that I am. Yeah. 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 You know, so I'm glad I hit home, man. No, and it's going to continue. But, um, is there any upcoming projects that you also want to let the, let the, you know, guests know that's coming up? Yeah. Yeah. So we, um, my sister and I just launched mastermind beauty and, uh, we're really excited about it because she's put 15 years or longer into her, her, her salons that, you know, um, our family owns two salons and, um, she been she has been spearheading things over there, and now we're um, we're joining forces with Mastermind Beauty, which we're starting to coach salons and studios and anybody in the beauty industry to teach them how to find the, the success that they desire, mm-hmm. how to use the internet properly with social media. We just launched a, um, our our planner for people in the beauty industry to maximize each day and um, and also keep their mind right. Mm-hmm. You know, how to, how to like align yourself, how to prepare, how to execute, but also put in the time it takes to be uh, to take care of yourself as well. So we just launched this super cool planner. It's a black uh, looks like a, a black book mm-hmm. and you open up and you can, you know, document each day and, and also try to hit your goals. Um, and so now we're doing that in a virtual course and uh, and we're, we're launching that all this month. So i um, really excited about all the stuff we're doing with Mastermind Beauty and uh Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I knew it was going to be something. You know, but yeah, we have a, a lot of different stuff going on, but I would say that's one of the newest and that's really, really taken off and we're making a, a huge impact in these in these different salons and um, other uh, stylists within the beauty industry. So, um, so yeah, that's uh, that's something to look out for. So if you have somebody that's within the the um, the beauty industry and is maybe struggling or needs some some guidance within that world, we're now coaching um, across the United States and eventually the world. But um, but yeah, 
Y'all hear that? Take notes. And don't even just take notes. Put it to action. Stop writing stuff down if you're not going to get things done. Yeah. Um, let them know of your, your social handles and stuff yeah. like that when they can find you. Sure. You can find me everywhere. Mark Rodriguez TV and us at Mastermind Media. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for having me on, man. This is great and uh, super happy for you and uh, you know everything that you're building. So No, thank you, thank you, thank you. It wouldn't be possible without you guys. Definitely want to give Ja her shout out too. Yeah. Y'all, she, she got a up and going, not coming, up and going project that she's working on for all you style heads out there. Let them know about your style box that you're working on. Oh, that's so mm-hmm, sweet of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a style box. Um, basically, I'll be sending your inspo you send me an inspo and I'll make it happen in a style box that is delivered to you. You try on your items and if you love them, you keep them. There's no if, they will. Mm-hmm. And how can they find you? You can find me at Jai Ma Official, J I M A Official, absolutely everywhere. That's right, that's right. Mm-hmm. Get your style right, because she will for you. Yes. And again, As you can see, I don't know if this is. Yeah, this that's is, you. Yeah, that's, that's all. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, that's true. There we go. There we go. And we're going to work something out too. And again, I'm going to say this throughout the entire course. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Thank you guys for being here. I'm your host, SB Press, and like that, we're gone. Yeah. Peace. They hate when you elevate. They're stacking up losses. I'm handing them out. Yeah, I had to go delegate. They feel like I'm floating. I'm lost in the moment. I swear I could levitate. They never believed that I would really fly. I had to go demonstrate.